Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. For the chicken coop, actually I'm gonna start calling it a chicken shed. And I think by the time I'm done with it, it'll probably be a chicken mansion or something. I wanted to take this opportunity today to show you how to cut a uh, roof. This style roof is a uh, lean-to. Basically, it's just got one side. And today we're gonna focus on the bird's mouth area, which is where the uh, joist lands and sits on the top plate or your wall, or like over here, I got a beam going through. This here is just a, a sample piece that I had going just to make sure all my cuts were gonna be good. If you do have that luxury, you could even use a piece of one by, or this is just a piece of scrap I had laying around. Take that time and figure out your cuts before you start cutting it on your, your new boards that you went and got. First thing we wanna do is figure out the pitch of the roof. So this is a two and 12 pitch. You can do any pitch you want really. Two and 12 is, is pretty good. Uh, it gets the rain off pretty quick. We don't really have much snow. If you were in more of a snow load area, we'd probably give it more of a pitch. And what pitch means is every foot, it's gonna raise two inches. So every 12 inches, it's going to raise up two inches. So this is six foot long. So that means this is raised up one foot. So now that we know our pitch, first thing we wanna do is cut the tails of the eaves so that when we put up um, gutters or fascia, it's not hanging out on an angle like this. It'll be straight up and down. So let's get started on that. Because we know that it's going to be a two and 12 pitch, uh, speed squares come in really handy for these things. We're gonna follow the common and we're gonna to go to two. That gives you a two and 12. And take this back to two, right on the edge of the board. And then we'll mark that through. Now, something else to notice while we're here is this two, let's get it perfect, lines up with this 10. So this is your degrees. So this two and 12 pitch is a 10 degree cut, which will make it really easy once we get over to the table saw. Now let's go over there and, and cut all these at a two and 12 pitch or 10 degrees. So now we got our um, rafter tail cut at a two and 12 or 10 degrees as we found out. What I wanna do is measure off that point one foot and I'll make a mark. I'm, I'm doing a one foot um, eave. You could do more if you like, it's up to you. And I'll bring that one foot mark right to the edge of the top plates. So I got that one found out down here. So we'll go over to the other side and mark that where it lands over there. So in theory, you could measure this. I'm trying to do this more unconventionally, the easier way for someone that's never done it before. This just is easier just to kind of set it up there and mark it. So let's take this down and make some marks. Another thing I want to add real quick is take that piece you measured at one end and take it to the other end and just make sure that the marks you made line up. If they don't, then go with the one that's uh, longer because you can shorten them up as you go down to one end. All right, so we got our mark uh, down here at the bottom side. From there, your pivot point, just pivot it to the two on your common here, 10 degrees, and give that a mark through. But what I'm trying to do here is make it really simple. Mark three and a half inches from that, um, from here. And then I'll bring that mark through. Doesn't have to go all the way, it's just a reference. A uh, framing square works really well for this because it, uh, it's flatter. Your speed square's got that one edge and it just makes it tough. Because I wanna cut out the minimal amount of uh, wood off of this joist or rafter, whichever you wanna call it. So this mark here is my angle that it needs to be cut to land on that top plate correctly. So I'm gonna take this framing square and line it up with that mark that we made and then that three and a half inch mark here, just wanna have this go through and, and end at zero there at that three and a half inch mark. 
take that and mark it through. And this is what we will remove right here. This is called the heel. So we have the heel and the, um, oh geez, I know what it's called, shoulder cut. So we wanna bring this heel cut through so we can cut that. You could get out the old trusty handsaw and uh, make that cut, but I do prefer a skill saw. Set your blade depth before you change your angle. Set your blade depth so that the last tooth on that blade just wants to go at the point of the heel and the shoulder. Lock your saw. Set it to the 10 degree mark. <clears throat> and then cut that, cut your mark out. Now the next cut, uh, make sure you flatten your table back out and you put your saw depth all the way down. This is gonna be much easier with a skill saw because you're gonna be able to keep your saw table flat and that'll make this cut flat compared to a hand saw where it's gonna be hard to, to come in at this shallow cut and try and get that. Follow your mark and just meet that edge there. Then you can get your hand saw and finish the cut. We're pretty much gonna follow the same routine for this up here. Three and a half inches from that point. Framing square. Follow that angle mark until the edge of your framing square lands on that three and a half inch point. Mark it through. Bring this point through. Now a good thing to do is to dry fit it uh, now that you've got one cut. So set it up there, see how it looks, make sure it's all good. Uh, no more math, too much involved. We'll basically line each of these up with that angle cut that we made and scribe that mark through. Now I would suggest uh, writing a sample or template or SAM on the one that you did first. Use that one to mark all of these. Don't cut one and then use that one to, to mark the next one because it'll start growing on you. So just use the one that you originally cut to mark the rest of these. Okay, so to make life real easy, if you're comfortable with the skill saw, take all the boards that you're trying to uh, cut and line them all up. And if you got one, get out the old uh, bar clamp. And doing this, putting them together, lining them up, you can cut them all at once, at least this cut. That'll keep you from having variances in doing these individually. This cut though, shoulder cut, we're gonna have to cut individually. Okay, so we got the joists up, <clears throat> but we're not finished yet. Remember back to when I said, um, mark both ends of your building on your uh, joists and go with the uh, longer one. That comes into play here. See how there's a gap there? And as they go down, they get tighter. So what that's doing here is these aren't exactly flush all the way through. It's gonna have a gap 
this much from this point to that far one down there. So what we're gonna do is measure this distance and take it out of the top there. Quarter inch. It's a much better fit there now. So we could call this done. You could just throw some plywood on top here, but rather than, than buying plywood and putting it on here, I am going to go uh, a different route. And because a building without eaves is a real pain in the butt because water would just dump down the side here. And I'm going to cut a uh, notch through all these joists. That'll tie them all together like a piece of plywood would. And I'm gonna have them extend out about six inches to a foot. And then we'll add another board on the side here as an eave. It's called a purlin that goes all the way through. So let's get started on that. So if you are gonna go the purlin route, a good tip is to number these so that you put them back in the order that they came out. We sandwiched them all together. Basically what I wanna do is divide this thing into uh, thirds. These are eight foot long, just under. So we'll call it eight, four feet to center. And then we'll just do um, two feet on either side of that. That seems pretty easy. Uh, can't go wrong. So two and six. And off that mark, we will measure an inch and three quarters. And that'll give us three and a half inches here. And we will remove all of this. Set the depth of a skill saw a um, two by four thickness. Cut that out. Once you get your two ends square cut, keep chopping at this here and then we'll chisel it out. nail it down, toe nail it right here and up at the beam. So I think that does it for today's video and uh, the rough framing. Uh, if you wanna see how long this takes me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you found this uh, interesting and informative, hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. And then I'll make a mark at six inches. And, <laughs> and then set that. Uh, Earmuffs, cover your ears.